Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris and this is Free PBX 101 version 15, part 15, where we're going to be talking about users and groups. Now we've already done extensions. We have already associated devices with extensions. Now this gets a little bit muddled because you can have extensions with multiple devices and you can have users with multiple extensions, right? So these are all sort of separate entities, but in general, users and groups in free PBX are how we assign permissions to our individual users, or more accurately, we prefer to assign permissions to groups and then assign users into those groups. So just like if you administer something like Active Directory, it's the same concept, right? You want to create a bunch of groups and mostly only manipulate the groups and then the users are assigned into the appropriate group depending on the permissions that they actually need. Here I am at the dashboard of free PBX. To get to users and groups, we're going to come over here to admin and we're going to choose user management. Here we can see I have some users that have been set up, but not all of my users. So if you want to actually add a user into user management, because you can have an extension that doesn't have an associated user, like maybe you have a phone in the break room that doesn't need permissions, it just needs to be able to send and receive phone calls. Well, that phone doesn't have to have an associated user. But if you have users that are not showing up in user management, let me show you how to add them first. So we can see I have 200, 201, 202, 203. Let's go add extension 204 as a user as well. So we're gonna say applications extensions. Extension 204 is Andy Bernard, so let's edit that one. And then down here we have our user manager settings. So link to a default user is set to none. So we wanna change this to create a new user. And then if you wanna give them a custom username, you can by default their username, this is for logging into the user base control panel for instance, is just their extension number. Uh, but if you wanna use like email or something, you can check this box and give them a custom user manager username. And then we have their password, which is automatically generated. If you hover over it, you can see the password. And then for groups, let's just select the all users group. That's the only group that we currently have. So we're gonna say submit and apply config. Now if we go back to admin user management, we now have extension 204. Okay, so let's look at the tabs here. We've got users, we've got groups, directories we're not gonna deal with in this video. Uh, UCP templates is brand new. I mean, UCP templates actually I just noticed for the first time when I last updated the server. What this feature is for is for creating default templates for the user control panel for your users. And again, user control panel is our next video. And this feature is so new, I have not even had a chance to check it out yet, <laughs> right? So we'll be covering this in an upcoming video. For now though, let's click on settings. And in settings, there's something that you may want to disable and it's this, send email upon new user creation. So I'm gonna set that to no. And the reason we do that is because oftentimes when we're setting up a PBX for a customer, we're doing it ahead of time, right? We get the PBX fully configured, we get all the users input and all that sort of stuff, sometimes days if not weeks before we actually do the cutover to the free PBX. So if you're setting up users and you're giving them an uh, email address and you have this set to yes, it could potentially be sending these emails out to your users that say, hey, here's your new user control panel login information go ahead and log in. And it might be sending that information to them before you're ready for them to see it. Okay, so in order to control when the users get their welcome email, I set this to no uh, right off the bat and we can always change that later. Down here we have the email body. This is essentially the email that goes to users when a user is created for them. Uh, it tells them basically, here's your username and password for the user base control panel. Okay, so we have our users and we have groups. As far as groups go, and again, I'm gonna keep referring to Active Directory because that's something that a lot of people are familiar with. The way that groups work in Free PBX is based on a priority, right? So we have priority five. If I create a new group that has a priority one, any permissions in that group are going to take precedence over anything that is priority five. And if I put something at a lower priority, it's going to have less priority over higher 
priority group rules. Now, if you set everything to the same priority, by default, FreePBX uses the most permissive permission or the most permissive set of group permissions uh, if there is equal priority. Okay, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's go ahead and edit our all users group. And again, I, just as a best practice, I strongly recommend doing all of your work with groups. Even if you're only assigning one user to that group, do all of your work with groups and then assign users to those groups rather than editing individual permissions for individual users. It just gets way too messy when you do that. Okay, so here we can see the name of the group. We can see a description, the language, the time zone. We can see how many people are members of this group. If we click on advanced, we can set some additional stuff about the time and date format. Then we have Crosstalk PBX Administration GUI. This is a really cool feature because this allows, it can, it can allow you to give rights to your users to log into free PBX administratively. All right, so not just the user control panel, the actual admin interface of free PBX, but it also allows you to select which modules and which extensions someone can administer. So imagine you had a really big free PBX system and you had multiple buildings on a campus or something, and you have different IT administrators per building, well, you might wanna say, okay, you know, junior IT administrator for building three, you're gonna have admin access to free PBX, but you can only affect changes on users in building three, in this extension range. Another way that you can use this is to only select particular modules that you want your users to have access to. So imagine that you have someone that is not necessarily very technical, but they need to log into free PBX to do some sort of minor function, like look at call detail records or run reports or something like that. You can give them administrative access to log into free PBX, but limit which modules they see. And by modules, I mean the items that are in these drop-down boxes here. So if you've created a new group and said, you know, reports only, you can basically clear out all of this other stuff in all of these other menus and only give them the stuff that is in the reports dropdown right here. Okay, then we have clearly devices permissions. We have clearly anywhere permissions. This is for, of course, clearly IP and crosstalk phones uh, permissions as well as what apps users have permissions to use. So for instance, the voicemail app, can they connect with VPN? Can they have the call parking app on the phone? All of these things are just permissible. Clearly Anywhere is of course for the Clearly Anywhere soft phones that we talked about in the last video. So something you might wanna do here is create a soft phone users group and then set enable soft phone to enable and only add users into the soft phone group that are going to have access to your Clearly Anywhere soft phones. That way if you have 20 users but only five soft phones, add those five soft phones to a soft phone users group and now all you have to do is add remove people out of that group to enable or disable access to the Clearly Anywhere soft phone. Contact Manager determines which different Contact Manager groups users are available in as well as can view. We're gonna talk about that later in the series. iSymphony, we're gonna skip. Faxing, we're gonna set to no. The reason we set faxing to no is because we don't do faxing through free PBX, or I should say, I strongly recommend not doing faxing through free PBX. Uh, and if you have this set to yes, you'll actually get an error in the free PBX dashboard uh, from time to time. So I make sure that that's turned on to, or set to no, which is something that we kind of do by default on all of our installs. The phone apps tab are for phone apps that run on Sangoma and Digium phones or any other phones that are compatible with phone apps if you have the Endpoint Manager commercial module installed. That's gonna be phone apps which can be assigned to buttons on the phone. We'll go through this a little bit later. Uh, but so for instance, conferencing, cues, agents, voicemail, uh, do not disturb. These are all buttons that you can add onto the phones by virtue of the free PBX phone apps commercial module license, which is free to use for Sangoma and Digium phones. VPN is for managing your VPN users. If users have the ability to connect to, v to your free PBX VPN, uh, UCP is something that we're going to come back to over and over and over because the UCP tab and then all of these sub tabs that you see in here determines what our users will see 
and what they have permissions to see when they log into their own user-based control panel. So for instance, if you have users that you want them to be able to see the call detail records for other extensions, like if you have a manager and you want that manager to be able to listen to call recordings and see call detail records for their sub-employees, um, this is where you would set that up. If you have a administrative assistant to the CEO and the administrative assistant needs access to the CEO's voicemail box through the user control panel, this is where you would set up those permissions. So again, you can see all of this various stuff in here, miscellaneous call history. See, by default, you get call history on your primary extension, but if you wanna see call history for other extensions, or if you have a group that needs to do that, again, you can add them here. Call event logging, clearly devices, contact manager, endpoint manager, find me, follow me. Uh, we're gonna enable that for all of our extensions. Smart Office, which is Sangoma's new access control system. There's a tab for that. Property management is their hotel software. Present state, Sangoma Connect is their soft phone. System admin, voicemail notifications. This is another commercial module called VM Notify. Again, most of this stuff you guys are never going to touch. Uh, and then we have voicemail. And again, this is where you can enable voicemail access. By default, the all users group, a user can only access their primary extension, but you might want to create a different group where you have their primary extension plus some other extensions that they're going to have the ability to check. And then we have phone. This is the soft phone that exists in the user control panel. We'll turn that on just for fun. All right, and submit. So again, in this video, I'm not gonna go through every single little detailed setting that you can set in the user manager module. You know, go through here and set what you need to. And if there's something that a user is unable to do, go check permissions first, because usually that's the problem, right? If they can't see, if they can't log into a conference bridge or they can't see a parking lot that they're supposed to be able to see, that's probably a permission thing. So go into permissions and see what that user's individual permissions are or which groups they're assigned to. One other thing I do wanna show you in this user manager module, however, is for individual users, if we edit, say, Michael Scott, and we click on user details, this is where we can add all of the user details. Now, someone had asked from a previous video, hey, how did you get contact photos to appear on the phone when you called from one extension to another? We did that because I have contact image set right here. So on a per user basis, users can set this via their own user base control panel, or as an administrator, I can set this from the user details tab on that individual user. So first name, last name, title, company, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you can go through and set all of these different details, including their cell phone number, work phone, home phone, and then this information will be available to other users in FreePBX through the contact directory, right? So we will talk about that in a future video. All right, we're gonna submit this and apply config. All right, that's gonna do it for users and groups in FreePBX. You're gonna wanna spend some time learning this aspect of the system, especially if you are administering a system that has large numbers of users. You're going to be in here quite often, you know, fiddling with things, adding new groups, adding users to groups, etc, etc. In our next video, we're going to talk about the user base control panel, which we sort of touched on here. We're going to get more into it in the next video. All right, we will see you guys in the next one.